Thank mm. you very much. Hope all okay. is well. We are we are doing better than Greater Accra. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it means that the ball is in your court now. <laughs> all right. Good evening, cherished listeners and viewers. You are all welcome once again to another episode of our radio lecture series on the course EDCL 111, the school curriculum, social change, and national development. Uh, to do the honors today is myself, uh, Ms. Miriam Oga of the Department of Educational Foundations. I'm here with my colleague. Stephen Kwachiape. Great. Okay, so we, we, we thank you all, uh, especially the technical team, for the wonderful work you're doing behind the scenes. A big one goes to our cherished students and the general public as well for always tuning in every Tuesday, 5.30 to 7.00 to partake in our lecture series. Okay, now we're going to have the lecture for about 45 minutes, after which the phone lines will be activated so that our dear students can make contributions, ask questions, seek clarifications where necessary. And so I repeat, the lecture will be for about 45 minutes. You can call the studio lines on 0503-923158, 0503-923158, or 0332-320201, 0332-320201. You can as well reach us on the various social media handles. Facebook, we are Radio Windy Bay 98.3 FM. Twitter, uh, Windy Bay 983 FM. Okay, so our topic for today is on the um, characteristics of an effective curriculum. Mr. Stephen, that is what we have for our students today. We're going to look at the characteristics of an effective curriculum. Last week we were here and we, we, we began to look at the concept of education where we established that there are basically about three types of education. We have the formal education, non-formal education, and then that of the informal education. We went ahead to look at the nature of the curriculum where we established that the term curriculum has won for itself several definitions. And so we came to a conclusion that curriculum, uh, uh, Tamaklo came in and cat categorized the various definitions that scholars have tried to come out with over the years into broad way, mid way, and then narrow way. So we could see that as dear students, the discourse is still on the school curriculum, social change, and national development. We are progressing this week to look at the characteristics of an effective school curriculum. Mr. Steven, what do you have for our, les our listeners um, on the topic? Yes. Thank you very much and thanks for the opportunity. Um, what we want our listeners to understand is that um, by now we've established what the curriculum is. And um, from uh, this week's lecture with them face to face, We've gone ahead to look at the various classification of the definitions, as you said, from um, Tamaklo 2005. Mm. And so we are here just this evening to say that you can have a curriculum for a sure. school. But as to whether that curriculum would be effective or mm. otherwise may depend on some characteristics. Yeah. So the characteristics that we're going to talk about, though they may not be exhaustive in nature, okay. I'm sure that if you take every school curriculum in generic terms and you mark each of these characteristics against mm -hmm. the school curriculum, then you'll be able to tell whether the curriculum is effective or, or uh, otherwise. As at this point, too, I'm sure our listeners have gotten the idea that a curriculum is not a syllabus. Sure. And so we should not just limit the discourse to a certain written document that lies 
outside. But rather, we should look at a curriculum in its entirety, as in everything that comes under the ambience of the school. Great. Thank you. Great. That was a wonderful one there. So if I understood you perfectly, uh, every school has a curriculum, depending on the context of practice in terms of the structure and then the purpose. So yes, our dear listeners, especially the students, we have introduced ourselves to the various um, categories of the curriculum in terms of their definition. That is a broad way, midway, and narrow way. So the point we are going to make, establishing a link from our previous lesson to today's one, will basically look at, irrespective of a curriculum, there are certain common features that run through them. So whether broad, narrow, or midway, irrespective of the education system, there are certain common things that run through every curriculum that a nation adapts or adopts. So some of the characteristics we'll be looking at this evening uh, has to do with the transmission of educationally valuable activities. We shall look at uh, another feature of the curriculum, which is that the, con the curriculum continuously evolves. We have another character that is based on the fact that the curriculum is uh, facilitated or based on the needs of the society. It is carried on both inside schools and then outside of the school. And so we are going to take these ones one after the other and look at what they are. If you just joined us, we are, we are having a radio lecture series on the school curriculum, social change, and the national development. and. Our topic for this evening is on the characteristics of an effective cur curriculum. So we, we let's look at the first characteristic or a feature of an effective curriculum. We're saying that it is a, 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 another characteristic of the school curriculum is that the curriculum transmits educationally valuable subject matter knowledge or content. That is the first characteristic we're going to look at. Mr. Pew. Sure. Yes, so um, the curriculum um, transmits what is worthwhile mm. to its educants. Um, that is just to say that uh, nobody comes to awesome. this school to study what the society frowns on. Mm. And so what we pick as what we are, what we pick as beneficial to the growth of the human system or the human society is what is always captured in the, the curriculum. curriculum. Yeah. And so in Ghana, for example, what do we consider what we are? Now we have discovered oil. It is important that we train our students to go and man the oil fields. Beyond that, we have young people who need to grow. And by growing, they need to understand the cultural elements from which they find themselves. And so students come to this school, they are trained to go and teach these people. Mm. Nobody in this school or elsewhere will plan a curriculum that will be detrimental to the growth of the society. Great. So we always plan what is worthwhile, or what is educationally significant mm. to the society. Because bear in mind, the students are here to be trained to go and serve the society. Great. And so in terms of the planning, we take into consideration where do we want to be in the next five years? These mm. are the worthwhile elements that we train our students with. Growing up, we were taught life skills. Mm -hmm. Now, if yeah. you should find yourself in a society, life skills will be worthless mm. and that is why we train students with what is either worthwhile valuable or educationally what significant. significant great great that was a good one there and so still on the feature of the curriculum that transmits educationally valuable content you will realize that the curriculum like my colleague has said, 
it is not meant to transmit practices that the society frowns upon. And so, whenever we find ourselves in school, going by the midway definition which captures the content that is so valuable that students are exposed to in addition to other activities, other happenings in the schools that the society sanctions. And so we are looking at a situation where if we find ourselves in schools as students, it is not only the courses that we are reading that will introduce us to knowledge out there or valuable educational content out there. It is not only EDCR 111, it is not the other courses you are reading in your various departmental departments that will shape your life. As well, we all know that we, 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 whenever you come to the lecture hall, you are there with students, you, your colleagues, you learn from them at the library, at the dining, at the canteen, and wherever you find yourself. So you are learning from one another. So educationally valuable content has to do with the content knowledge that our dear students you will be receiving from the various courses you are reading, if it's at the basic or senior high level, the various subjects you are reading, in addition to other activities that are planned and supervised by the school. So you realize that activities such as field trips, clubs, associations, sports here and there. So you have science association, we have chemistry students association, mathematics students association. In addition to other activities that goes on in the schools, it is expected that finding yourself in an educational environment or institution, you will acquire some educationally valuable content subject matter knowledge from all these areas. And so if you are here and all your headache is about getting the A's in the courses and then that is the end. It's going to be disastrous. Because if you all bear witness, my bet, I was telling you people the other day that oftentimes when we find ourselves in a community and a certain graduate behaves in a certain way, people forget about the program that you, 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 you read. The first question they ask is, ah, is it not this person who said he has uh, graduated from the university. Is it not this student who said he's in the university? So it means that the society has expectations from you, the students, that once you are in the university, you are not only expected to exhibit a knowledge of the content that you have received, but at the end of the day, your, your, your totality in terms of your behavior in the society needs to be refined. We are going to look at another characteristic, which has to do with the fact that the curriculum should be holistic in nature. If we say a curriculum should be holistic in nature, we don't know, uh, uh, will our students be able to do justice with this in terms of a curriculum being holistic? Yes, um, I remember yesterday in my class, um, a question came up that um, this day and age, the focus has always been on examination, examination. So if we are saying that the curriculum should be holistic in nature, then how come the emphasis has always so been on the development of the cognitive dimension, especially mm -hmm. when, um, um, unfortunately, some of our private schools and even government schools and some parents to that extent always expect all their students to get aggregate six hmm. and so and these are the people that the society worships hmm. the person will get aggregate six which is very fantastic but in the long run i told my students that yes i agree we have two types of curricula hmm. we have the ges one and then we have the yek one yeah. Of course, if you want to follow the WAEC um, curriculum, the whole emphasis will be about the development of the cognitive domain mm. to, uh, at the expense of the affective mm. and the psychomotor. But you agree with me that um, in your life, there are mm. certain challenges that you encounter that you wish you could withstand it, mm -hmm. that you wish you could have the shocks to really say yes this is it it has happened great and so once uh, we come to school 
we shouldn't just think that you made a last point that everything that we are doing on campus you may think yes why must i be part of this once it is planned and it is guided by the school then of course it is there to provide the other domain so mm -hmm. effective and then the the cycle motor especially yeah. um we can cite an example in the su in the mm -hmm. senior high school mm -hmm. When it is time for SU, some people will say, oh, these people, they are just going to make noise, so I won't go. Yeah. That's fine. You become a board member of a group. Mm -hmm. You attend a meeting, and in the meeting, you are called to pray. You are somebody who doesn't attend church, mm -hmm. that doesn't attend SU meetings. Mm -hmm. And so what are you going to say? And yesterday I told them, you will say a radio that was said that for more than 10 times, which may not be your fault, but yeah. because you have neglected these domains, mm. the, the psychomotor, the affective to the periphery, mm. there you find yourself struggling. Okay. So when we are planning curriculum, we don't just look at the knowledge that the, students, the student is going okay. to get, mm. the value, the attitude, the skill, because we define education as a process of not just imparting okay. knowledge, the value, very important. The scale, very important. And this 21st century, the attitude. Because without the right attitude, you, have, you may have a first class. Sure. Without a scale, the first class will become meaningless. Without the attitude, the first class will become meaningless. Mm. Great, great. So, all in all, I think that the point we are establishing is that the curriculum is such that it is holistic in nature. The curriculum is aimed towards the total development of the learner. So our dear students, every curriculum uh, 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 has it that at the end of the day, learners who might have gone through the curriculum wouldn't only develop their brains or their intellectual ability. So your the curriculum is aimed at developing your intellectual ability your affective and then the psychomotor which has to do with the skills there again you would realize that you are in school we meet you two periods face to face and at that time that is where we communicate directly with the content but after that you have a long day to spend with your colleagues in fact in the shuttle in your room wherever you find yourself you will definitely need people and so if you look at that you are studying so many courses yes it could be that you are in the university to read be ed, um, chemistry education or accounting education or whatever but you are doing so many courses and all these courses you are doing, you'll be doing psychology. It is expected that psychologically you'll be refined. So like my colleague said, you may find yourself occupying a certain position one day in one way or the other. And you will be expected to exhibit a particular behavior. So for instance, you, it could happen that you apply for a job and... As part of the requirements, you have already added your certificate, which is a first class, in addition to your transcript, which states all the grades you had while pursuing the four-year program. But you realize that the, 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 the institution where you applied will require that you attend an interview and interaction. If it's about just the cognitive development, then that certificate or transcript which lies on the table of whatever you apply to should have been enough for them to just give you the offer but they will invite you it that is the point that they would want to test your affective and then your skills so that they won't be misled by your mental uh, um, qualification so my dear colleagues those of you who are so anti so in fact, you have to interact. Let the heart brace come. It is there to make you emotionally stable. Now, along the line, you would realize that there are certain students, a D or an E, in fact, if care is not taken,
Some may even want to commit suicide simply because they have been referred. The affective aspect of education is there so that it will prepare you to uh, withstand whatever shock that comes your way. You have academic counselors. It is important that you make good use of them because they are the ones that will refine and prepare you to be emotionally stable to live a good life in the society. If we go back to our basic schools, senior high schools, we have counseling units in all these schools. One will ask, what has counseling got to do with a student reading general art or physics or science? But hey, it is important because you are not only in the school to receive the content knowledge. You have to be emotionally balanced, physically fit. That is why PE will continue to take its place in the school curriculum. Morally, you have to be upright. So money, devotions, and the hymns are there to cater for that. And so there's a whole lot. There's a whole lot. The point we are making this afternoon is that, this evening is that, any effective curriculum does not only prepare the mind. It is holistic in nature such that it prepares the head, the heart, and then the hand, the skills which you would require to uh, live an effective life in the society we're going to take a third one and then i think after the third one they can activate the phone line so as the calls come in and and we respond to those messages and calls we'll continue with the others so let's look at you're saying that the curriculum is based on the needs of society um How? yeah yes i think at this point we have to combine that with the curriculum continuously evolves, evolves. great and so if we are saying that um, curriculum continuously evolve, then on what basis must the curriculum evolve? Mm -hmm. It will always evolve based on the exigencies of the time or based on the needs of the time. Sure. And so, like, we find ourselves in the 21st century. I told mm -hmm. my students yesterday that if we are called to design a school curriculum now, whether we like it or not, we are going to find... A topic like the outbreak of pandemics mm -hmm. why because at this day and age we have at least in the last three or four years experienced about two pandemics we've experienced Ebola we've experienced mm -hmm. COVID and these are the demands of the society at this time how can we withstand COVID sure. so in trying to design a school curriculum we will ask ourselves what are pandemics what are some of the types of pandemics mm -hmm. that we've experienced as humans? Mm -hmm. yeah. What are the other ones we are here to experience? Mm -hmm. How do we deal with these pandemics in case they okay? Sure. Just so we can prepare our minds that the society we live in is not going to be static. Mm -hmm. The society once we say the society is dynamic, then we whenever we design in a school curriculum we have to design a school curriculum in such a way that it will respond to the need of the time. So when we started, I told you that in the 90s, there was, or before, in the 80s, we were not teaching democracy in our senior high schools mm. or in our basic yeah. schools because this, Ghana as a country had never experienced a typical democracy. Yeah. Now, in, after 1992, we find ourselves practicing democracy. So we now have to inculcate the element of democracy in the school curriculum. Okay. So as the society begins to grow, as the society begins to change, there are certain topics, certain subjects that may not be necessary again for the development of mankind. Yesterday, I mentioned to my students that when we were in junior high school, we learned a topic like basketry <laughs> so assuming without admitting that you have majored in basketry okay. at this the guitar era mm. our artists have moved beyond now they are doing things even in the digital realm yeah. sure. and so if you are still using the raffia and yeah. how are you going to adjust to the, to the demands of this 21st yeah. century yeah. So, whenever we are preparing the school curriculum, we have to look at the era we find ourselves. This time is driven by ICT. And that is why even at basic four, 
they are supposed to learn coding. Mm -hmm. Basic four. But when we were growing up, the assumption was that as a basic four, you don't even qualify as a student. You are still in that, <laughs> yeah. um, you may say upper primary, but the teachers will see you as lower primary. <laughs> but we are changing. So the whole point we want to make this evening is that, yes, as a student, <laughs> one day you are going to find yourself in the classroom. You're going to cite examples when you are teaching. Those examples should be based on the needs of the time. Mm. Don't go and cite 1950 examples. When you are training your students, and when we were in school, we used to, your time, time is, is gone. That is why the curriculum has been diversified in the standard all students would be prepared for that immediate society that they find themselves. Yes. Remember, we will link at that point to it. Once, the, one, the curriculum continuously evolves. Two, it is based on the needs of the society. society. Three, it is always designed for a specific group, group of people. people. Mm. So you can go and bring a curriculum from Nigeria to Ghana mm. and say, oh, I found it interesting. I want to implement it. No. Hook, line, and sinker. It might not hold. Mm. And so any time that we are designing the school curriculum, what kind of society are we designing the curriculum for? for? Yeah. You cannot design the curriculum without taking into cognizance of the fact that there is a certain old curriculum. Mm. You have to go through that old curriculum. Okay, these topics, they don't function any longer. Let's delete them. Let's introduce new ones that will match the needs of the people we are dealing with. Yeah, that was a wonderful one there. Uh, yes, and I think our students will bear witness to this. You see, I'm sure that their niece, one of their needs, perhaps after senior high school, was for them to get admission to the universities. And now they find themselves here. So I don't think if they are listing their needs, they will add the fact that in the next five or four years, they would want to be at the university reading the same first degree they are reading now. Even if they want to go to the university again, it will be pursuing further studies. And so, yes, the curriculum, like we've, it has been clearly established, is based on the needs of society. Individual needs keep changing. And so it is the same way that the curriculum also continuously evolves so that it can meet the needs of the society at a given point in time. And there again, you realize that uh, it has been stated that for international best practices, every five years, the curriculum needs to be revised. But in our context, the hmm. issue is, the, is different. We will reserve this when we are looking at the models of development. But ideally, that is why it is not a, it, it will not be prudent that the need the situation you find yourself in will continue to be the same for five years. At least it should change. And so closely connected to that, like you said, is the fact that the curriculum is designed for a particular group of people. And so that is why I think that you will not go to Canada and find on their national curriculum a course like Ga Dangbe or Chi. Even if they will have something of that nature, it will be that non-formal kind of education, but not the formal one that the school teaches. And so it's the, the same thing applies here. And so we could say that the curriculum, as one of its characteristics, is meant for a group of people. So it could be meant for um, Ch Ghanaians. We could have a curriculum that is meant for uh, Ghana, a curriculum meant for Canada, for Togo, for USA, here and there. Oh! based on the needs of those nations or societies of course no nation is in isolation we all depend on one another so in ghana here there is a possibility that since we find ourselves in africa we could have a common need as africans we could have a common need as being or uh, locate, located in west africa we could have a common need as being in British West African countries. That is why, for instance, I was saying that the fact that WASI is being written as um, an examination that is taken by students in former British West African colonies, it means that 
we have a common history. And so, despite the individual needs that these nations have, we have certain needs that are, are common. And so, at this point, if you just joined us, it is a radio lecture on the course EDCR 111, the school curriculum, social change, national development. We want to activate the phone lines at this time so that our dear colleagues can phone in to make, to ask questions, seek clarifications, and then uh, all those issues will be addressed. The line, the studio lines are 0503-923158 and 0332-32. 0201. You can as well send up your WhatsApp and text via 0503 923158. Mm -hmm. And I think that Facebook. Facebook, we are streaming live on Facebook at Radio Windy Bay 98.3 FM. And I think our, our students, we need to keep encouraging them. I was telling them that they should just save the studio lines. <laughs> on their phones. In fact, add it to your, your, your contacts so that whenever lectures, because you are going to stay with us till level your four years is level over, to level 300. Hello. All right. Hello. Hello, Hello Kola. Uh, Colors, please uh, reduce the volume on your radio sets before you, you, you call. You are giving us feedback oh, here, which is dangerous to our uh, health. Hello, Kola, your name and the de uh, your, your department. Okay, my name is Thomas Ousu. Thomas Ousu. Department. Yeah. Your department again, please. Geography department. Geography, good. Thomas, yes. let's go. Please, tell uh, what you are saying that there are some topics which is not necessary to be part of the school curriculum as the curriculum is based on the needs of the society is learning of history nowadays important to be part of the school curriculum okay thomas you want to find out whether the learning of history is important in the school curriculum am i right yes please okay you will be answered so kindly okay stay. thank okay. you yeah Okay, you can. Okay, so Mr. Pew. Yes. We, we let's look at. Um... Hello. 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 Kindly lower the volume on your radio set. Yeah. Hello. 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 Kola. Hello, Kola. Your name and your department. Please, my name is Adia Sheikh here, and I'm from High Tech Department for Level 100. Great. Question, let's go. Please, do you let me take a presentation from this by seven? You talk of why you can do your curriculum. And then I'm not all that clear about it. Okay. Why you can um, do syllabus? You are not yes. about that. We will we, we'll address this. Yeah, why you can do your curriculum. Okay, so which part are you actually not clear with? Please, is it like the classification of curriculum or can we do that the types of curriculum? That is where my doubt is. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we, we are going to address that. So kindly stay tuned with us. Okay. It will be addressed. Yeah. Sure. All right. Yes, mm. um, and so Miss Miriam Oga. We have another caller on the line. Hello, caller. Your name and your department. Okay, we, we've missed our caller. <coughs> All right. So, uh, you know I'm always going to be a biased person when it comes to um, history and what it's... Kindly lower, can lower the volume on your radio set. Okay, thank you. Great, please. Your name and your department. Please, my name is Abu Shadrach. Shadrach. I, I pay department. Great, Shadrach. Let's go. Okay, um, please. Um, uh, it's a, it's a suggestion. Um, the, what is given to us? You realize that the late mention of the comprehensive sexuality education that was to be added to the school curriculum, which actually generated a lot of uh, issues. 
for what we are getting now, I believe that going forward, when there is anything like to be introduced like this, it is not to be led to only governments to do the explanation because we know that now we see it was a good thing. But because it was coming from government, Ghanaians didn't accept it. So my suggestion is that going forward, the school or the, the education department can also come in as a whole and then take up the whole challenge. Then the second one will be on the, the languages. We said that in Canada, they don't study languages like maybe Ghana language, like C or Ga or something. But in Ghana, we also learn their languages. I want a clarification on that and why that is possible for us to learn their languages, but they are not uh, to learn our languages. Thank okay. you. Okay, all right. And so we, I think we've had enough questions. Question. Let's respond and to them. Let's respond yeah. to some of them and then we... Uh, the first one has to do with the issue of uh, Ghanaian language not being studied in... That is the third question. The third one I would yeah. want us to begin from there. The, Great. the point is that, um, you know, Franco is mm. now in U.S. teaching Ghana language. Mm. The, the premium that is placed on Ghana language in the U.S. will not be the same premium mm. that will be placed on their own native mm. languages. It is not that they are not studying. They may study for obvious reasons. They come to interact with our people. people. Ethnographic researchers come to mm. conduct their research, research and all that. And you know that one of the most powerful tools on earth is language. Mm. So yes, we are not deviating by saying that, okay, when you go to Canada, you won't find people learning tree. They learn, they learn. but we are looking at the premium that is always placed on some of these foreign languages in their jurisdiction. Our students do not have, have to get it from. This is our society. We need people to learn our language. We were here this um, year, when there was a news item that we are looking for Ga teachers, we can't find them. Ga. Schools mm -hmm. are closing down because they yeah. can't find people to teach Ga. Yeah. Who tells you that we place premium on this subject, but as a society, we have not developed to that point where people will feel we need to learn about our yeah. own language. Yeah. The second one has to do with let, history. Let me, let me okay. kindly add to because we are on the language, so let me kindly add to that so that uh, Shadrach will, will get us clear. You see, the issue is that, yes, we are here, we are studying French, we are studying, um, I think, Arabic, Chinese, and other languages. Now, you know, I started by saying that no nation is in isolation. One day, somehow, you need to understand one or two languages that are being spoken in the world. You could find yourself um, in the business area, where you would need to be traveling to these Arab nations just to transact business. So you can imagine if you can't understand their language, how well. And I was even saying that if I find myself in Togo, now Togo, in fact, if I want to buy uh, something, I need to ask, so this few safer I have on me, what and what can it buy? How much change do I expect? But at least if I, I, I was to be able to understand the French language and speak it fluently, where I think that things will be much safer. You realize that transacting business, going to Togo, buying things and selling will be... So we, we, we have reasons why these nations are studying some of these languages. And if we are studying it, at least it will help us to communicate effectively when we find ourselves there. And what is the premium that we've placed on Arabic and Chinese? Is it compulsory from KG1 to um, tertiary? No. Okay, so you can take the second one. I think Shadrach still made a suggestion concerning the sexuality component in the... I don't think and, we spoke and, and about and it. We, we didn't talk about that, but the point is that, in fact, we are not going to look at another characteristic of the curriculum, which has to do with the fact that it is democratically conceived and broad-based. It is not government who imposed it on us. And if we say government, who is government? It is you government, and I. It is you and I. So we'll look at the various stakeholders who agreed on these components before um, we, 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 it is brought to the public domain. Yes, I think it's because yesterday I explained that for me, I think um, the issue of sexuality has to be grounded within the African context mm -hmm. uh, to the point that if we talk about sexuality, what is the African perspective of sexuality? Mm -hmm. 
In Africa, sex is sociological. Unlike the Europeans who think sex is biological. Mm. So in Africa, your parents care about who you are bringing home. Mm. In Europe, somebody is born, the next day he sees, he says, no, I feel like a woman. Mm. So I'm going to... I'm, 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 <laughs> Transgender. And that is why I feel our students need to understand that you are an African. This is who you are, irrespective of how much sure. you try. It will take a very long time before people will accept mm. you. Mm. So I think that is why he raised um, this that question. Oh, so okay, the well, issue about why are we still teaching subjects such as um, history. history, linguistics, um, this traditional subject. Listen materialism alone will not develop the world we should not we should stop thinking that it is only when we do engineering then we have developed you can have all the scientific knowledge in the world without the right attitude you can't go and where are we going to get the right attitude apart from literature there is no other subject that develops the morality of a student mm. than what history mm. and so you need the history you need the philosophy you need the um, religious and moral before you can be there. And so our people do not have to think that, okay, in this day and age, we need to throw subjects such as history and the rest to the cardboard. It will not hold because we can't get there. You go to China, they are still studying their Chinese history. Go to okay. US, they are still doing their history. Meanwhile, we are here thinking that, okay, let's throw the history let's just do math let us just do science the people we take loans from are still doing history you that you are going to contract the loan you say no you yeah. have stopped doing history without your past you can never move yes and you see the point is that every subject has its history yes that is about every subject every course has its history and so keeping a track of our nation in fact it will guide us to look at where we coming from, where we are, and then where we'll be heading towards. And then I think uh, Kwesi from Hypers also asked the issue of YX syllabus and uh, yeah. uh, GES syllabus, and so he's confused. There shouldn't be any confusion. <laughs> they are all official documents. Mm -hmm. Sure. They are all part of the official curriculum. Just that we are saying that when you pick the GES one, you become a comprehensive, uh, a complete student. Yeah. When you pick the WAYEK one, you are just training yourself for examination yeah. because the mandates of these two institutions are not the same. Sure, sure. And so that is it. WAYEK is an, it's just an examination syllabus. And so you're going to stay in the school for three years and you will be taught with a GES syllabus, which will train your head, your heart, and then your mind. Then after that, areas for examination is what the wayek focuses on but unfortunately we need to blame sometimes our teachers um when students come to form one there are lots of activities and so by the time they get to form three there is no time to really focus on the ges syllabus the whole attention is then drifted to the, the YX syllabus which is just exam driven yeah and i've told you already that we need to blame our parents we need because if i have completed senior high school and i have a skill I have the right attitude, but I've had aggregate 40. How, what am I going to tell my parents? Am mm. I still respectful? And that is why I had 40. 40. It hasn't. So, yes, we need to get to that stage where parents would accept the fact that life is not just about passing examination. Sure. We've seen in UCC a situation where a parent had to slap the son because the son came home to tell him that he had graduated. And unfortunately, when they were mentioning the names on the podium, they mentioned only like first class people. And this son had gotten third class. And the dad was angry that you told me you've gradu graduated. <laughs> Why didn't they mention your name? Your name. Anyway, <laughs> this is one of, uh, in fact, it's one of the things. And uh, thank you very much on that. Uh, Thomas, Thomas Ousu of Geography. I think we've addressed he. His concern has to do with why subjects like history. No, we can't um, take them so out. So I think, uh, yeah. So we're going to look at, do we have some test messages? Okay, let's. Yes, we have some on WhatsApp. This one, good evening. My name is Kotob Napari from the Political Science Department. My question is, you said there are certain behaviors the society will be expecting from you. Mm. And if it fails, the society blame you. I want to know, 
if a person practices such a bad behavior, does that mean the curriculum is not effective or the person was not actually taught well? Okay. So, um, uh, dear uh, Texter, you see, you are in school and, like I rightly said, the curriculum or the school is not established on the basis of training people to become arrogant here and there. It is expected that your behavior, your attitude will be, will, will be refined, will be transformed for the better. As, but along the line, that is why we began the course with the concept of education. There are certain behaviors, certain things that you would learn from your friends as you find yourself in school. So you go home and some parents will be like, oh, this my son, since he came back for vacation, he has really changed. And it's the same way that in another home, a parent will be like, ah, maybe we go invest in buy yet, dear Debbie. Say so it in it the proper context. <laughs> now, college, ni and a sabi, oh, behavior, where Jimmy said, so that our people understand <laughs> that the moment you go to school, the expectation is high. In fact, so you are in the university, that is why it is a universal city. All these behaviors are there. And I was telling, I keep telling them, you have academic counselors, you are not making good use of them. You are working with bad people. That's the word. When you chew in some peanuts and you put one, uh, unfortunately, one is very bad, it will spoil your appetite for that. You have to throw everything away. So it is about you identifying the right people, the good things that you do. You are matured enough. You are not like children in KG or primary where parents are always on them. Go to dining, rising bell, do this, do that. At this age, you are mature. I don't think you will expect a VC to come to your various hostels to wake you up, go and learn, do this. Do. You are matured enough. And Miss Miriam, let's add that there is always a difference between the taught curriculum and the learned curriculum. Mm. As for teaching, I will come to class. Okay. I will teach. I will tell you all that is expected. Mm -hmm. But if you don't learn. If you don't learn. And learning is not just about I've written curriculum. I've and passed. I've, I've had a were you able to internalize mm. the things that we told you mm. most of us will just come for lectures because we want to have a grade i've told my student if it is just a grade you want you don't have a problem but i want to see what i'm teaching reflecting in your daily sure. life and so you go to lectures some are in slippers and you question them so when you finish and you, you you'll be invited for interview will you go in with that um, thing you are wearing, no. So in as much as you are trying to shape and mold you, you are also trying to deviate from that. Some of you go as far as asking or passing comments, ah, is this part of the course I'm reading? Which is very bad. So you are not yeah. only here to train your, 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 your mind. You are only here to learn the narrow now, curriculum. But we are not as, uh, pardon us, we are not here to train you narrowly. In fact, we are still on the midway. We are creating a balance. Um, so we have a tester. Good evening. Please, my name is Kudanu Vivian, political science. Please, my question is, what are some of the requirements one must have to, uh, to draw a curriculum for school? So if you, basically, if the person wants to work with the National Council for Curriculum and Assessment, what requirement must the person gain? Yes, if you go to NACA, we have people with degree in education mm. for the various subject areas. And then we have other people with master's degree in curriculum and other subject areas. It depends on your interest. I feel for curriculum, it's one of those areas that you don't have to be pushed to join. It mm. will depend on the kind of thoughts that you have about our educational system. Mm. It refines your mentality about schooling, mm. it refines your ideas about education mm. in totality. And so I think that is very good. Okay. Do you have another? No, I think that is all. And okay, for that so, matter, so we can Yes, go. I, we can activate the phone lines now if there are more questions we take. But we are going to take the last two. The fact that the curriculum is democratically conceived or is based on a uh, broad-based consultation. And then... Um, hello, call... Hello, Kola. Your Hello, name, Kola. Can you tell us your name and then your department? Yes, please. I'm calling Michael. Thank you. Sir. Michael, your department? From the English department. Where? English. From the English department. Great. Michael, let's go. 
It will be clarified. It will be clarified. All right. So I think, yeah, let's look at the fact that the curriculum is democratically conceived, probably, and then provides learning, different learning opportunities so that today. Uh, hello, caller. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Your name and your department, please. Uh, this is Marvin Abdano. And how does your name? Hi, Pess. Your name, please. Abdano Marvin. Adam, Adam, okay. I'm going to move in uh, Please, my question is, uh, I want to ask whether the curriculum is a rigid uh, document or a plausible one. Okay. Yeah, I'm asking because uh, one of the characteristics is uh, it's based on the needs of the people and it also evolves. Mm -hmm. And concerning uh, COVID-19, which is a new disease before, uh, after the curriculum has been designed. Mm. Do we have any possibility of adding information about it to the new curriculum or we wait until five years? Okay. Okay, we're well yeah. yeah. It will be addressed. Yes, uh, stay tuned with us. All right. I think uh, we, we, let's take the last two so that we, we attend to their questions and then. That's fine. Okay. So the curriculum is democratically conceived or based on broad-based consultation. I think that in attempting the earlier questions, a student asked that if we say the curriculum, um, I think the issue of government imposing, or government was trying to impose a particular element on us and the society. Yeah. So if we say that it is um, a curriculum is based on broad-based consultation, what are we trying to let our students know? Over here, yeah. Yes. Um, what we have to understand first of all is that um, curriculum does not germinate. Mm. It comes from several contestations, and in those contestations, you find various individuals trying to push their own agenda in the school curriculum. Sure. In designing the school curriculum, like you said, broad-based consultations opinion leaders, chiefs, so, um, CSOs, and so parents, teachers. students, teachers, textbook writers, mm -hmm. donor agencies, all these are agents and agencies that must be consulted. Okay. You'll be asking, why must we consult a donor agency? Mm. Why must we consult a parent? Why must all these individuals are part of the ecosystem that shape where we find ourselves as Ghanaians. Sure. So in designing the school curriculum, these individuals would come 
Let me give you a typical example. Assuming you want to draw RMB curriculum, mm. what weight are you going to assign to Christianity? What weight are you going to assign to Islamic religion, religion. and the other religions? Yes. Because now they all find themselves within mm. the this Ghanaian system. Yeah. Yes. So what weight are you going to give to them? This is where the democratic conception comes in. Mm. Now these individuals, these agents and agencies, we need to find a, a middle point, point where all of them would agree that, okay, we are comfortable with right. what is in the curriculum. So curriculum is not a document that an individual will take it home as an assignment, mm. do it and bring it the but next morning, morning. No. and say, this is the curriculum right. for basic two people mm. in Ghana. But rather, several individuals will come together mm. And when people come together to design a school curriculum, you know what goes in. Mm. At a point, people will get angry, angry. Sure. because everybody has an interest. I have studied science. I want students to come to the senior high school to learn science. Then you are telling me that based on the needs of Ghanaians, we don't need science. How are you going to explain this to me? This is where the democracy comes in. At the end of the day, all of us need to agree mm -hmm. that these are the subjects, Subject. these are the topics, and these are the elements we want our students to learn in the school. Great. And interestingly, we are the same people complaining that, oh, the subjects we are studying are so many. Oh, there are so many, they are that, they are that. And uh, <laughs> another person is fighting for another component, something to be studied. Yeah, it's one of the things. It is not easy, even if you are just two. And you're trying to arrive at a consensus on something. See how difficult it is. How much more the stakeholders you've mentioned, teachers, uh, opinion leaders, religious leaders, politi chiefs. In fact, everybody. So at the end of the day, we have to go by what we, 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 we have to strike a balance. a balance. You may not get it 100%, but at least once an aspect, your voice is heard somewhere, I think it is still in the right direction. So... The curriculum is not something that is imposed on us. It is something we develop it ourselves. Teachers are involved. Learners are involved. Uh, everybody is involved. So it is our own, whatever we are using or practicing now in our schools, it is you and I. We give back to it. The, the <laughs> point is that, like this tester I have here, please, how is curriculum democratically conceived when only few stakeholders? <laughs> we can't go through all houses in Ghana. Like the census. <laughs> <laughs> Asking parents, what do you want your case to study? Mm. Parents, teachers, association. It is there. So, yeah. We can tap from this group. Mm. Not. It is a Teacher union of... Union. Yes. Sure. So yeah, if we say consultation and you are saying it is still few, mm. it doesn't mean that we will come to every village in Ghana trying to find out, okay, children, what do you want to mm. study in school? Remember, Ghana is a centralized state. Sure. If it, it were U.S., every district would have the, the opportunity, opportunity to more or less decide what is appropriate for mm. that district once it is in line with the national framework. Sure. But we find ourselves in a centralized state where everything is centrally like, imposed. imposed. It answers one of the testers who was trying to find out why... Uh, the resources are not in the village. Yes, yeah. we yeah. don't design the resource uh, as a curriculum aspect. I wouldn't design a curriculum thinking that the resources are in the schools. Sure. This is my proposal to government. Mm. It is up to the government to say that with these ones, I can provide. These ones, I cannot provide. Therefore, take it out. Yeah. We cannot wait as a country for every school to be resourced before we design the school, school curriculum. curriculum. Sure. So in the new curriculum, it says schools must have computers. Must we wait till every school gets computers before... Every we... school in this country. It's... And you see, I think that it was a step in the right direction. When ICT began as a subject to be studied in our schools, I remember it wasn't called. Uh, it wasn't examinable. Yeah, yes. It wasn't examinable. So that is until we realized that a good number of the schools throughout the nation have access to these uh, computers and other things before they made it examinable. So yes, it is important. So must we wait before we, we, we move on? Yeah. So the, it is based on broad-based consultation. That is the fact. Some schools may not be directly involved, but 
the fact that um, experts didn't come to a particular school somewhere to solicit their views. That is why we have the various teacher unions, like you said. And so you have a NAT rep, a NAGAT rep from your school, from your district, from that village, who also sends his or her message to the appropriate quarters, and then it's being taken care of. All right. And so I think the final one, um, I, it has already been addressed, the fact that the curriculum is... Uh, based uh, institutionally based and then yes, the rest yes. we've already addressed that so let's see let's uh some people we have michael here he said he's not convinced on the fact that the curriculum is holistic in nature and that uh, a child should be able to read as a t at a certain stage in class and then the yeah. child can read by their hands yeah yeah <laughs> what we have to let our people understand is that we never fully develop a curriculum mm. even within the classroom the teacher has to develop, develop the, the curriculum so yes it is a document it has been handed to the teacher get to the classroom and implement it we have given the activities we think that if you engage the children in it will develop their hearts we have given activities <laughs> that will develop their hands activities that will develop their mind you have got into your school you think that your students need to pass BEC. Therefore, you've neglected those ones that can develop their minds, uh, mm, sorry, their, their hearts. hands and their hearts. You cannot blame the curriculum. Mm. So as a teacher, today I was telling my students, teaching is commitment. You are not going to do it because mm. you want a salary. If not, then stop. Mm. You have to go in with a passion to see your students develop. If this remains your core duty, you would emphasize the development of the heart, you emphasize the development of the hand, and the development of what? The mind. mind. Example: we should get to that stage in our national life where parents, teachers, and stakeholders would accept the fact that examination is not always about, um, school is not only about what? Examination. I feel certain subjects like a student is coming to write an exam and you say, what is discipline? Mention the types of discipline. I have my personal reservations mm. that some of these subjects should be made what? Mm. Not examinable. We want to see. So like these are classes. You look at the student's behavior in the classroom. Mm. Then you award some marks for you that. You award some marks. <laughs> Whether the student qualifies to read the program he's even reading. Okay. Whether he's an agent of the program, it will determine the kind of grade the student is supposed to what get. Yes. Yeah. Do, do we have some messages? Yeah, there? so um, Agbanu Marvin, now that there is a current curriculum before COVID-19, is there any flexibility to add issues concerning COVID-19 to... Yeah, so you are going to teach about um, personal health care. Okay. Even though COVID is not in the curriculum, nothing prevents you from telling the students that in this era that we find ourselves in COVID, it is important that you keep your environment clean, mm -hmm. you wash your hand, yes. you observe all okay. the protocols yes. that are expected. That is it. Yes, a teacher can do this. Yes. Even though it is not part of the curriculum. Yeah. And so I don't think, I, I don't know why our students are still thinking this uh, narrowly. When you are saying that the schools are not only training their mind, teachers, school authorities, and everybody in the school is trying as much as possible to um, be a change maker on the hearts of the students, their social, their physical, their emotional life, and the rest. And I think our English, usually English language teachers, or the subject itself is sad that they may ask them to write some essays on this and i think that the schools are doing their best don't wait because covid will never appear in the school curriculum as a subject on its own yes. so it is through interaction with students that we would uh, mention some of these things another yeah adamu of hyper says is the curriculum rigid or flexible <laughs> yes uh, i think yesterday i was telling them that um because of where we find ourselves as a country, our curriculum, it's, we implement through the fidelity. Mm. And with the fidelity system, you cannot go to class and say, this is what I feel like teaching. teaching. 
even when we have said that, assuming you are going to teach matter mm. in the senior high school, students have to know the meaning of matter before you talk about the types of what? Matter. You cannot go and say you feel like teaching the types of matter before telling your students what the type, okay. uh, what's the meaning of what? Matter. matter. Sure. So it is flexible. You can use your experiences to explain. In the same vein, it is rigid in terms of the structure because our people need to understand. If not, you go to a class and everybody is teaching what he or she wants. Mm. Sure. Meanwhile, we are in a centralized state where students are going to take a central exam. A standard one. Of a course. standard one. And so if I go to class and I say, this is what I feel like teaching, you also come and say, oh, this is what I... Then in the long run, we are not going to help our students. Sure. Sure. The, the bottom line is that the curriculum makes room for that teacher. That is why, like, we keep writing our lesson notes. And before every lesson, you Lena, review previous Lena knowledge. Notes, learner plans, <laughs> learning plans. Yeah, we'll write all these things and you build on the competency of the students. And of, you can't tell me that you will teach children, like you said, you can't teach children three letter words, four letter words, before you actually teach them how to write the alphabet. You can't do that. So I think that with the issues of the curriculum, the content have been arranged in a systematic order. Take the course outline for this course, for instance. If we should have gone straight to probably uh, models of curriculum development, it would have been, before teaching the concept of curriculum, it would have been something else. So Disastrous. I think that the curriculum, in fact, experts, you and I, and then the experts who sat down, they, 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 they took it from one level to the other in terms of the sequencing of the content and everything. Good. Yeah. And so, so at this juncture, we're still waiting for, for calls. For calls, yeah. And comments, test. contributions, and then um, if there are none, uh, we draw the dockets. And... Yeah. Okay, so if you just joined us, I think some of them, most of them have been complaining that uh, they, usually they are lectures, so they're not able to... Um, partake in the discussions it's like they always come, come and uh, listen or watch dead news or so that is what some of them were saying this one is dead news anyway so if you just close from lectures and you joined us in fact we are we've been having a discussion on the characteristics of an effective curriculum and we've identified that the curriculum is holistic in nature it is that which is composed of only educationally valuable content that could be transmitted through the various subjects that are taught in addition to other activities that are planned under the guidance of the school. We also went on to look at another characteristic which is based on the needs of society. And I think we made it clear that the curriculum shall reflect the country's needs, their social values, their aspirations. So just as our needs keep varying, it is in the same line that the needs of society are also not static. In fact, they are dynamic. It keeps changing. So in as much as our individual needs change, it affects the society, which with time, the curriculum has to be reviewed, if not changed totally, so that it meets the current needs <laughs> of society. We also went on to look at another characteristic, which has to do with the fact that the curriculum um, is designed for a particular group of people. And so, per the context that we find ourselves in, um we have a national curriculum that we're using we can't go and adopt hook line and sinker a curriculum from uk or from nigeria togo and and i mean uh, practice it here hook line and sinker more or less like a, a, a defensive weapon no where there are one or two areas that we need is important when we apply it in our situation it will help why not we all learn from one another. We can make use of that. And we've also established that the curriculum is not composed on us by any external body. 
it is not imposed on us by any government of the day. Whatever curriculum that is circulating, that is being practiced, that is being used in schools, is something that was actually given birth to by you and I. In fact, our views were heard. And so teachers, policy makers, religious groups, learners, and all stakeholders in education, in one way or the other, we influence what goes into the curriculum. And so, in a nutshell, the curriculum is democratically conceived because it is not imposed on us. And finally, our students should know that the curriculum provides um, varied learning experiences to learners inside and then outside of the learning environment. It's been a wonderful time this evening. We've had a good number of calls from Michael, uh, Adamu also called. In fact, we know there were others who were trying. Kwesi was there, Shadrach, Thomas. Stay tuned with us every Tuesday, 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. for a series of um, uh, interesting lecture series on the school curriculum, social change, and national development. Thank you once again, our technical team, for the wonderful work you did. And my co-discussant, thank you once more. I think we shall meet on the same table next week. So, bye-bye. <laughs>